away from the corner. No. Anybody do any research? No. All right, thank you so much. Uh, State, you may call your next witness. Oh, the state calls Mark Franks. Can you repeat the last name for me? Franks. I know. Okay, you may have a seat. Thank you, Your Honor. Make sure you speak close to the microphone so the jurors can hear what you have to say, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Could you introduce yourself to our jury? Hi, I'm Mark Franks. And how are you currently employed, sir? I'm employed with the United States Coast Guard. And how long have you been employed with U.S. Coast Guard? I've been employed with there two and a half years. And what are your duties with the Coast Guard? I'm a maritime enforcement specialist. Uh, were you employed in law enforcement prior to that? Yes, I was. And what agencies did you work for? The Lake Mary Police Department and the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Now, were you employed with the Lake Mary Police Department in October of 2013? Yes, sir, I was. Right. And at that time, what were your duties with the Lake Mary Police Department? I was a patrol officer. All right. And um, were you working in that capacity on the um, on October the 22nd of 2013? Yes, I was. Did you receive a dispatch to respond to a location lo uh, at 735 Primera Drive in Lake Mary? Yes, I did. Okay. And approximately what time did you receive that dispatch? Uh, approximately 1,300 hours. Okay, and for those who may not be familiar with military time, would that be 1 o'clock in the afternoon? 1 p.m. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. What was the nature of the dispatch? It came in as what is called a Signal 85, which is a trespassing. All right. And did you respond to that location? Yes, I did. And what type of location was it? What residential, office building? It was an office building. And um, how long approximately did it take you to arrive at the scene? I would have to refer to my notes exactly. Please do if you, if you need to. Approximately two and a half minutes. All right. Now, um, you're, um, you were in a patrol car, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. You were in uniform? Yes, I was. Um, was your um, patrol vehicle um, equipped with a, a video camera? Yes, my patrol camera was equipped with a dash cam. All right. Now, when you arrived on scene, did you see anyone leaving the scene? I saw a silver vehicle leave the scene. All right. And um, can you tell us approximately how fast it was going when it, left the, when, when it was leaving the... The vehicle was leaving at a higher rate, rate of speed than a normal uh, vehicle. Okay, and when you say, when we say leaving the scene, what location of the scene was it leaving at a... It was leaving the parking lot. It was, must have been backed in, by the way it left. It must have been, it must have been backed in. Objection, not speculation. Okay, if he can articulate the basis for his knowledge. Okay, so I'll sustain the objection. Rephrase the question and see if he can articulate. Yes, sir. Um, just tell us exactly what you observed. I observed a car which was behind another car, and then I it, I couldn't see it originally when I pulled in, and then I saw a car leaving the parking lot. So it was so normally when you back out of a parking space, you would you would back out and you would need to pull it, you need to turn the wheel, cut the wheel, and then go ahead and drive out. It just came straight out. Okay, so you never saw this silver vehicle back out. I did not. You just saw it go straight forward at a higher than normal rate of speed. That's correct. Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may do so. <clears throat> Sir, I'm showing you what's been pre-marked for identification purposes. Thank you did it. Five M's. You can take a look at that and tell me if you recognize it. I do recognize it. And what do you recognize it to be? The the uh, copy of my dash cam from in car of that day. All right. And um, having had a chance to review this, is it a fair and accurate recording of from your dash cam video recording device in your vehicle on that day? Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time, I'd offer State's Exhibit Five M. Evidence. Your Honor, we need to approach. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. 
keep that one. Okay. And we'll just have it like that. For you. The item will be admitted into evidence. Madam Clerk, what numbers does that receive? May I publish 657 to the jury arm? Yes. And, and just to clarify one point before we publish this, um, sir, um, the address that you responded to, you said it was 735 from Mayor Drive. This was the, the business of American Canine, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And, Your Honor, if I could have you activate the screen. To stop the, um, the the video here at what is 12 seconds into this. Um, the vehicle there at the far end of the parking lot is that the uh, silver vehicle that you were referring to, sir? Yes, it is. Now, um, Mr. Franks, um, after arriving at the um, at the American Canine um, office building, there, did you make uh, contact with individuals there? Yes, I did. Okay, and without getting into anything that anybody said to you, um, did you make contact in, um, with uh, Yesenia Suarez? Yes, I did. And did you also make contact and and talk to uh, a number of other employees there at American Canine? Yes, I did. At some point while you were there, um, um, well, let me just ask you this. Um, uh, Ms. Suarez, when you talked to her, again, without getting anything that she said, what was your observations of her demeanor? I'm visibly upset. Um, after you spoke to Ms. Suarez, did you um, speak to um, Luis Toledo? I spoke to someone on the phone that that uh, identified himself as Louis Toledo, I guess. And, and you said you spoke to him by phone. How were you able to uh, get a hold of him or talk to him by phone? So I had a work cell phone, and I, Yusinia Suarez had given me the number, and I had called him twice. Okay. And um, the person answered the line? Yes. And identified himself as Luis Toledo? That's correct. And uh, when you talked to him, what did, um, what did he... Did he tell you why he had been there at American K-9? Yes, he did. And what did he tell you? We had a conversation as, as far as why he was there, and he basically stated he was there to talk to Yesenia and her bosses. Okay. And um, did he tell you that, um, th that he and his wife had argued there? Yes, he did. And, and did he tell you that he was there to tell her bosses, her employers, about her indiscretions? Yes, he did. Now, how many phone conversations did you have with the defendant? We had two phone conversations. And what was the reason why the first call came to a conclusion? Either the line got disconnected or he hung up. Okay, you're not, you're, you can't really say for sure to be I fair. cannot. All right. And you had a second conversation. How, how long after the first conversation did you have the second and, and who called who? It was a couple minutes after. I went back inside um, to talk to Yesenia. And then I stepped outside again, and I, I called her. I'm sorry. I called him. Okay. And without getting to anything about what was said during that phone conversation, how would you describe the tone and tenor of that conversation um, from the defendant? The second conversation we had was a little bit more heated. There was a little bit more emotion in that conversation. And how did that call conclude? Um, I was in mid-conversation, and I believe he hung up on me. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Any cross-examination?
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Morning, I guess. Morning. I'm sorry. It's okay. I met you before. Do you remember me, I'm Jeffrey Dean? Yes, I do. It's nice to see you again, sir. Thank you for coming. Me too. Yep. Um, that little bit of the video that we just saw. You, yep. You, did you see it? I did. Yes. Okay. Is that the amount of time you saw that car? Uh, no, it is not. You saw it before that. That's correct. Um, the way my when I turn, I just turn my head to look at the business first, and then. But obviously the camera it's only pointing straight ahead but you saw it before that that's correct how long did you see it approximately just a couple of seconds before so you saw it a couple of seconds from how far away yes sir i, I did see it um a couple of seconds approximately i'd say that's a approximation about 100 feet 100 for 100 feet is uh <clears throat> so that's 30 yards basically is that such what you're saying yes sir so how far are you away when your dash cam is showing it because that looks like more than 30 feet to me is that wrong well i, I said uh, 100 feet 100 feet okay, 30 yeah. yards I was, I okay say. so is it more than 100 feet from your dash because it looks further than that to me i would just give an approximation to me that looks like about 100 feet so that's 100 feet. So would you say this room's 100 feet? Wall to wall? No, I wouldn't. No, how, how much would you say this is? About 50, sir, max. How much? About 50 feet, max. 50 feet. So it was twice as far away as this room when you saw it. Why were you even paying attention to it? Can you repeat the question, sir? Why were you even paying attention to that car? So. I turn my head to look at the business, just general practice as a police officer. We want to, we are told to keep our head in a swivel. So when I go to a business, um, the call, I don't know exactly, every, all the information is delayed from dispatch, so I don't know what's happened possibly. So just as a good practice, as I was taught, even before we get on scene, we're kind of keeping our eyes, we're trying to keep, you know, a focus is what's going on in the scene because we don't know what's what's going on. They, someone could be arguing outside or whatnot. So just as an officer safety pra practice, we do keep our eyes on the business as much as we can or wherever we're pulling up uh, for a call for service. You didn't know who it was? I did not, sir. You didn't know if it applied to anything, right? I did not, sir. <clears throat> you just saw a car leaving, right? That's correct, sir, yeah. You didn't even make a note of it that it was speeding, did you? Um, I, uh, yes, sir, I did note in the, what's called a, a CAD report, but it's basically the report before, it's a report of what dispatch and what we can type in the actual screen that we'll see on our computers. Would you report? Would you report? It's right here, sir. Would you report? Okay. It, can I reference my notes? Sure. Okay. So on the, it's called an event report, so every time we get a, uh, every time that there's a call for service, um, <clears throat> there's a report on here. And in here, I told dispatch it was where it was possibly leading to, and I said I, I basically made an assumption that it was a silver Saturn. I know it was a silver, silver Saturn or silver car, excuse me. And I wrote it, and they wrote what I said, which was signal 12 in the police world. That's a reckless vehicle. So I, um, I said to them it was a silver Saturn, signal 12 to reckless towards. South on Premier is where I thought it going, and I said I also said it was possibly related to the event that was occurring. When did you make that report? This, um, so, so this is actually what we're telling dispatch real time when you're so, driving up. Yes, sir. So this is in the report. So they're just whatever we say over the air. A lot of times they'll write notes in this call screen. So, do you remember me taking your deposition? Yes, sir. Ago? Yes, sir. Do you remember me asking you about this car? I remember we had a conversation about it. I don't remember the specifics. Uh, do you remember me asking you <clears throat> if you saw a car leaving? I did. Do you remember me asking you if you knew who it was? I don't remember. Yes, do you remember me asking you... Um, if you knew what kind of car it was i believe i said i made an assumption to what kind of car it was
Do you remember me asking if you called for backup? Yes, sir, I do. Do you remember your answers? I said no, I did not call for backup. Do you remember your answers to the other questions that I just asked you? Do you remember your answers to me? I do not, sir. If I showed you your deposition, would it help you refresh your memory? Yes, sir. Six. Can we have a reference for yes, the Yes, I'm going to do. So the reference is uh, page six, lines eight through 15, and page seven. Line one to four. May I approach? Yes, sir. Did that refresh your recollection, sir? Yes, it did. So before I asked you, <clears throat> that you couldn't confirm whether a car was leaving there or not. And you said, that's correct. Do you remember that? I have the page and line number of that. That's line six. I'm sorry, page, page six, line eight. Would you like me to read you the question? Yes, sir, please. All right. So, all right, I said, when you said you can't confirm that, you saw a car leaving when you got there. Is that correct? And your answer was, that's correct. Okay. So the way you worded the question then, I, I, obviously I, I can tell that there was a little bit of a confusion because the way, okay, read the question one more time. Because it was a comment. I'll read, I'll read, I'll start reading from line one. Okay. Do you mind? You can just read that, that question okay. again, the way it's read. So I, 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 I said, all right. And when you said you can't confirm that, you said you saw a car leaving when you got there. Is that correct? And you said, that's, the, that's correct. And then you said, and then I said, do you suspect that was Mr. Toledo? And you went, um. And I said, or you don't know. And you said, don't know. And then I said, OK, all right. When you got to American Canine Detect Detection Services, can you tell me what you found there? And then you answered me. So when I asked you before, you said you, you didn't know if that was a car. Well, I knew that was a car because it... I'll read you the question okay. again. I don't want to confuse you. And okay, when you said you. you can't confirm that, you saw a car leaving when you got there. Is that correct? And you said that's correct. But now today you're saying you knew that was something. Are you saying you knew that was something? I knew it was a car leaving the parking lot. Yes, that's why I, that's why I answered. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kind of confusing the... When you asked, when you asked the question in that position, I was under the assumption that I, you were asking me as far as if the call was related, and I, ju I, I didn't, I was not knowing that. I, I saw a car leaving, so I obviously I told dispatch that. And when I stepped out, that's when somebody else told me that car might be what you're looking. But for. You didn't tell me that when I asked you in your deposition. I, I, there's, it's to me. There's an obvious, I, I, there's an obvious disconnect. I did not understand. I, I thought your question was asking something else. Because I knew that there was a car leaving, that's why I wrote it. Um, that's why I, when I said something to dispatch, and that's why I also put it when we we talked about it either at the super, uh, earlier hearing, we talked about a the lawn maintenance people as well. That said something to me, and so I said, yeah, okay. So all right, thank you. And that's why I said something to excuse me when I said something to dispatch. You did that CAD report on your way into that building, is that correct? Um, no, the, the CAD reports, uh, this is dispatch, they, they enter this in. So this is just a, this is just a report that's generated every time there's a call. So like if there's a traffic stop or a disturbance, this will Sorry. automatically be generated and the yeah. dispatch will, will enter these in. You can see who, you can see who puts stop. these in. Let me stop you. Thank there. you. Okay. Uh, either use a leading a lead question. I will. He's going to get an okay. chance. Okay, go ahead. Ask the question again. Thank you, sir. You reported that report as you were driving into the business, didn't you? The CAD report is generated as you're driving into the business. You didn't generate that later, did you? That's that's correct. Yep. What's correct? That they 
this is automatically generated, and then sometimes what we say over the air, they will type in. So you had that when you talked to me. I don't know if this was there, if it was just You know what I mean. That report was generated mm -hmm. when you talked to me. Is that correct? I don't know if it was, it was already generated, yes. It existed when you talked to me. Isn't that correct? I don't know if it was there at our disp disposition is what I'm, I'm trying to say. I know my, my actual offense report was there, what I typed in and, and what goes to the state attorney, but I do not know if, if this was there. It might have been. Well, my original question was you said it as you were driving up, did you not? I said that once I got out of the car. Okay. Once I confirmed with lawn maintenance, they had, they had made a comment to me, and then I said, okay, and that's when I made the comment to dispatch. I just want to make sure this is clear for you. I don't want to, okay. I'm not trying to trick you. Mm -hmm. So when I asked you, and when you said you can't confirm that you saw a car leaving when you got there, is that correct? And you said that's correct. That somehow confused you? I'm going to object because that's not what the question says. That's what it that's says. I asked for the question to be repeated verbatim. All right. And then when you, all right, period. When you said you can't confirm that, comma, you saw a car leaving when you got there, is that correct? And you said that's correct. Did you say that's correct? I did say that's correct. All right. Later on, you said you had two phone calls with Mr. Toledo, is that correct? Yes, I did. One call dropped? For whatever I, reason? I do not know what happened to the, the phone call. That's why I said dropped. So it was gone? It was, it was gone. Well, I was still talking when I looked back at the phone, because I had asked him. I was usually expecting some responses to look down, and it was no longer there. It was just on the main screen. So it was gone? Yes. Did he call you back or did you call him back? I called him back. You waited, actually waited a few minutes, right? That's correct. I waited a few minutes. And then you went back outside? Did yes, you know? I, went, I went outside. We were inside and then I went outside. So originally you thought the call may have dropped because you couldn't get reception or something because you were inside the building. No, I, I was outside on the first building. And then you went inside? That's correct. And the call dropped? Can you rephrase the question? Would you, okay, Austin, would you like me to, to give you what happened on, in that regard? You had a phone call, you lost it, is that correct? Yes, it is. You had another call because you waited a few minutes because you were inside talking, weren't you? I was inside talking, yes. Okay, no, then when you got done with that, you went back outside and called again, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You never did call for backup, did you? I never called for backup. They put... Sir, did you hear my question? You never did call for backup. I didn't call for backup. Okay. No. And you didn't call for backup because you didn't think you needed any, did you? That's correct. When you got there, you said uh, that you met with Ms. Suarez? Yes, I did. Okay. Was she alone when you met with her? When I first met with her, no. She had some of her bosses with her. So they were all there, is that correct? Yes. Did you get more than one name to see? Can you elaborate? Yes. Did you, when you spoke to Ms. Suarez, did she give you names of people that were involved in this? I do not recall. Do you recall getting the name of three people? I do not recall. Do you recall getting the name of Mr. Owen? I do not remember. Do you recall getting the name of Kevin Dredden? I do not remember. Did you talk to Kevin Dredden? Yes, I did. So you do remember? I remember talking to him. Okay. Did you talk to him about what happened? I asked him if he had anything relevant to the case, and he was talking to me, but there was nothing that I could put in the in the report that had any relevance to the case so, at the time. I'm sorry to interrupt you. So whatever it was he said you didn't deem to be relevant to whatever was going on there. Is that correct? That's correct. 
Did you talk to Mr. Owen? I do not know what Mr. Owen looks like. Do you know who was in the room with her when she came? When you got there? There were a couple people there. I was told that I was told that it was her bosses. I didn't get the names of them. And didn't talk to them. We didn't have that length of conversation. No. Did you talk to um, the receptionist? Just we just talked briefly. Did she give you any relevant information? The only thing that she told me that was that she Did you understand Mr. the question, sir? Did she I'm give sorry. you? I'm sorry. Try not to interrupt. Okay. I didn't want him to say hearsay, so he was going to say what she said. So anything relevant? Um, I put it in the report, but it was not per. It wasn't um, her actual. I didn't put her name attached to it. a moment yes sir <laughs> thank you judge that's all i have thank can you, you redirect yes, all right sir let me uh, see if we can clear up some confusion um, um, the defense counsel was asking about your deposition. Um, the deposition, the, he asked you uh, uh, several questions about um, a question that he asked you. And the question was, question all right, and when you said you can't confirm that, comma, you saw a car leaving when you got there. Is that correct? Yes. yes sir. And you said that's correct. So you were saying that it's correct that you saw a car leaving when you got there, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a copy of your probable cause report with you, sir? I do. Can you pull it out? All right. Can you look at the second paragraph of that report? Yes, sir. Just take a look at the first sentence. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to read it? I have. Did you report in your report that you saw a four-door sedan speeding away, speed away as you were pulling up? Yes, I did. And you did this report that same day? Yes, I did. Okay. You, there was some discussion also about a CAD report. I want to talk a little bit about what a CAD report is. In case there's any confusion, I know there was some discussion, some description of it. Uh, when you get a call, um, isn't it true that you are um, talking with dispatch? Is that correct? Yes, I am. And they're talking to you, right? Yes, I am. They tell you basically the reports that they're receiving from someone on the phone or something like that, right? Yes, sir. And then as you arrive on a scene, you speak to the dispatcher about observations that you're making, correct? That's correct. And all of this is in real time? Yes, it is. And the dispatcher on the other end of the radio is typing in things that you are telling them. Is that right? That's correct. And so that's what you're talking about. You arrive on scene, you're telling dispatch that you're seeing a vehicle um, speed away, and they're typing that in as you relay that information to you to, to them in real time. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Nothing further. I don't want to belabor this, but I don't want to. I don't want to leave the impression that I'm trying to trick you or anything. So bear with me, okay? Okay. So this is about a question I asked you at your deposition. Do you remember going to that deposition? Yes, sir. I do. Do you remember where it was? I do not. Do you remember it being in the conference room of my office? Just bits and pieces. It was a okay. while ago. But you remember being there, right? Yes. Do you remember a state attorney being there? I do. Okay. Do you remember who it was? I remember it was a different gentleman. That's what's on okay. the... Uh... But there was a state attorney there, right? Yes. There was a court reporter there, right? Yes. I was there, right? Yes. And you were there? 
Yes. And we're sitting at a table, right? That's correct. There's no judge. There's no... I mean, it's formal, but it's not like this, right? Correct. We're just talking about what you did, right? That's correct. Had you ever had your deposition taken before? Uh, once or twice. Okay. So you know if you don't understand the question, you're allowed to say I don't understand the question, right? Yes. So when I ask you, when you said you can't confirm that, you saw a car leaving when you got there, is that correct? And you said that's correct. You weren't confused when I asked you, were you? Can you repeat the last part of that question? You weren't confused when I asked you the question, were you? No, I was not. Did you think I was asking you something else? I didn't. What did you think I, I was asking you? I only was, I only took the, when you asked the question, I only took the last part of it. You saw a car leaving, correct? Yes. Because I assumed since I saw a car leaving, it was on the dash cam, that it was common knowledge that I saw a car leaving. Just to put this in context, do you remember me uh, asking you what kind of call it was? It was a general call. Do you remember me asking you that? I remember once I refreshed my memory. From so that. when I showed you this page, you saw it? That's correct. Okay. So the questions before this were, well, I'll just start with page six, which is what you reviewed, if you don't mind. Do you mind? No, that's fine. All right. You said we received a call, Lake Mary Dispatch, and I was dispatched to 735 Primera. Do you remember saying that? Yes. Okay. And I said, yeah. And then you said American Canine Detection Services. Is that right? Yes. Your answer, I said, all right. And was it just a general call? And you said it came in as an 85. Is that what you said today? I said a signal 85. Okay. The code is trespass, person's trespassing. Right? That's correct. And I said, all right. And when you said you can't confirm that, you saw a car leaving when you got there, is that correct? You said that's correct. The next question was, and do you suspect that was Mr. Toledo? And you said, um. And I said, or you don't know. And you said, I don't know. Is that right? That's right. So I asked you about the car, then I asked you about Mr. Toledo, but you were confused about that? I just was seeing where, I didn't understand the question at first, so I just wanted to confirm that you were asking about him leaving. And when I answered the question, I wasn't sure because at the time, all I did was, all I saw was a car leaving. I wasn't sure that it was related to the call. And then once the lawn maintenance people said what they said, I said, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. May the witness be excused? Yes, sir, he may. Defense, may the witness be excused? All right, thank you. You may step thank down. You. Uh, State, call your next witness. State calls Kevin Dredd. While the uh, witness is coming forward, can I have counsel sidebar? No, yes, no court report. Remain standing, raise your right hand, and be sworn, please. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Could you lean into that microphone? You're a little soft-spoken. Yes, good morning. Tell us your name, please. Yeah, Kevin Dredden. Can you spell your last name for us? D-R-E-D-D-E-N. Okay. And where do you currently live, Mr. Dredden? What in city and state? San Antonio, Texas. Okay. How long have you lived there? I uh, just recently moved. Okay. What are you doing for a living in San, An San Antonio, Texas? Well, I work for American K-9, okay. um, but that's where I reside uh, right now. Okay. Does American K-9 have an office out there? No. Okay. So I'm in the process of actually relocating. Relocating again? Again. Yes. And to, to which location? Um, North Carolina. Okay. Does American Canine have an office there? Yes, we do. Okay. How large is the American Canine Organization in the United States? Yeah, 
currently? Yes, sir. You know, we were recently um, acquired by a different company. Um, and so we kind of grew because we fall under different, uh, well, we're fall under Constellus, uh, which is the, the, uh, the large company. And then it's a few companies under the um, umbrella. Mm -hmm. So we're part of it. Um, so before maybe three to 500 employees, now um, it increased significantly. I don't know the number. Okay. How many offices does a, how many offices did American Canine have? How many does it have now? Roughly, do you know? Well, we still have the same footprint mm -hmm. as far as what AM Canine does. Um, so, I mean, we had an office in Lake Mary. We had office in Afghanistan, Iraq, um, and then we had kennels. Um, a kennel that we um, worked at or worked with um, in the U.S. before. But right now, I mean, it's still it's just one office uh, under one roof in North Carolina. Okay, and every, you said everything's consolidated in North Carolina? Consolidated now. there. We still have our contracts and, and main offices overseas. Okay. What exactly do you do for American Canine? Yeah, I work in the uh, training department. Tell us what that means. So I'm responsible for... Uh, training dog teams, students, handlers, and deploying them overseas and within the U.S. Okay. What kind of training, what kind of deployment? Give us a little bit better idea of, of what you do daily. Okay. So right now, my position changed from previously, um, uh, but I'm responsible for managing uh, several uh, subordinates, uh, overseeing about 100 dogs, in and out um, of our of our training facility, mm -hmm. and uh, just making sure they get downrange. They check uh, meet the requirements of the contract through either internal or external certifications, uh, and just maintaining some dogs as well. Is there a particular kind of dog that you work with? Is it bomb dogs, drug dogs? Yeah, we have both um, explosive detection, narcotic detection, patrol, uh, which is your attack dogs, um, and some of those dogs are dual purpose as well. Okay. Prior to joining American K-9, uh, did you have any military experience? I did. Could you tell us about your military background? Yeah, U.S. Air Force. How long? I, yeah, oh, just over 10 years. Okay, and yeah. did you have deployment overseas during that time? Yes, I have. And to which areas, sir? I was overseas in um, Iraq and Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Uzbekistan, and deployed overseas quite a bit in Korea. Is part of your job with American K-9 also going overseas? Um, or are you a Not necessarily right now. Okay. Um, but it, it can uh, require some, some uh, travel overseas. Have you been overseas in a, in a foreign land during your time with American K-9? Yes. So when I separated from the Air Force, mm -hmm. I, um, I started with AM K-9 uh, in Afghanistan. And I was over there for, you know, just right, right above, right below uh, three years of with, in Afghanistan, first with AM K-9. When you're deployed overseas, what's your essential function? What, what are you doing with American K-9? Judge, Judge, it ties into his relationship with uh, Ms. Suarez and how he knows her. What he did in Afghanistan. I think we have sufficient background information, so I'll sustain the objection. Okay. <coughs> how much time did you spend overseas? Uh, just below uh, four, three years. Okay. Yeah. With AUM K-9. With American K-9. Correct. And during your time overseas with American K-9, uh, did you have contact with the home office? Um, during my time overseas, I did not have contact with corporate office. Mm -hmm. um, I routed all comms through the, um, the country manager that was in the country, and they had, you know, their support function that communicated back office. It wasn't until I... <coughs> applied for a position corporate wise um, that I had contact with anybody from uh, back office. Now, some 
some folks from corporate would, of course, travel to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. And so I had that contact, like my supervisor. Okay. Um, he would travel, but that's, that's it. Okay. And tell us how it is that the HR department where Ms. Suarez worked overlaps with your side more in the, the field and operations part of the business. While I was overseas or? Generally and while you were overseas. So generally, just like any company, you have to do orientation, you have to onboard um, according to the position, you have to go through some types of uh, uh, training mm -hmm. and then prepare for mobilization overseas. And so corporate would be responsible for doing that and deploying the teams. Once the teams get in country, then it will be a handoff uh, from corporate wise to okay. in country. And when you're talking about corporate, that would obviously involve the HR department. That would involve HR. Okay. Yes. Orientation. Did you know Jacinia Suarez? Did I know her? Yes. Yes. And how long did you work with Ms. Suarez at American Canine? I worked with her um, corporate-wise for, I guess, just over a year. Yeah. What were her essential duties within the company as you understood them? As I understood it, she was responsible for HR deliverables. She's the one that would be contacting um, the employee, doing their pre-hire documentation, um, and uh, onboarding, scheduling uh, the briefings with various uh, departments, um, and and then uh, pass them over to operations. So the operation department can then make sure all the training is is um, complete and then move from there. So all the way up to the hiring as well. And how did that dovetail with your assignment at American K-9? Yeah. Tell us kind of how that transition went yeah. as an employee moved through to your area. Yeah, I was a deployment manager. So I was responsible for identifying uh, a manning shortfall or projection and working with Yesenia on, on um, telling her that, hey, I need a guy uh, or a handler or person, a kennel master um, for this contract. She would then work with recruiting. Recruiting would give her the name of the person. Um, and then she would um, make contact, do their orientation, send out the employee agreements, um, and make sure all that's done prior to them flying to, to training. So I would work with her um, in relation to getting the, making contact and saying we need to backfill a position or. Was she essentially yeah. your direct contact or, or a conduit through which you acquired new assets for deployment overseas or into the line of duty? Correct. How much contact do you believe that you had with her uh, while on the job during the period that you worked together? Well, it was a daily uh, thing uh, where we always would communicate. I, I think very seldomly would we not uh, communicate. Okay. And I just want to be clear that in 2013 you were working in the Lake Mary office, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you have personal contact as well as electronic or telephonic communication? Yes. How much time did you spend with Jacinia Suarez uh, in a social capacity, um, away from work, Christmas parties, that kind of thing? Yeah, well, we had a, um, the first one would be the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. um, and I had just, you know, it wasn't much of interaction, but it was at the Christmas party. Um, and then afterwards, we all went out to dinner. Um, well, not all, but some people went out to dinner. Did you have an opportunity to meet her family, or more specifically, her husband, Luis Toledo, uh, during these social interactions? Yeah, the first time I met him was at the uh, Christmas party. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you see him here in the courtroom today? I do. Could you point him out, tell us who he's wearing, please? Yeah, the man in a black suit, glasses. Okay. And 
How much time do you think you spent with Mr. Toledo at the company Christmas party? Not much. Um, was, Speak up, please. I'm sorry. Not much. Would you say in the time that, that you got to spend with him that you developed any sort of relationship at all? No. Okay. He wasn't a friend? No. When was the next time that you saw him? Um, after the company Christmas party? After the Christmas party, um, uh, a few of us went out to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was it. Um, we all went home. The next time after that was was um, we actually went out to um, Orlando. I forget the name of the the place we went to around Universal. Um, this was a separate night out. This was the, a separate dinner. That's correct. When you went out on on this night to Orlando, how many people were involved? Was it just you and him? No. Okay. How many people went? Okay, um, well, first, Yesenia, Lewis, myself, my wife, uh, we went out to eat. Um, and then we went down, downtown to Universal Orlando. And, and then we were met by um, a co-worker, uh, Mario, and his, um, I believe, fiance at the time. Okay. During the second contact, with the defendant, do you believe that you uh, created any substantial relationship? Would you count him as a friend? No. Okay. When was the next time that you saw Luis Salido? I can't figure out that specific time, um, but it was in passing um, at the office or outside the office. Mm -hmm. when maybe I was outside and maybe he was you know going upstairs do you have any long conversation with him no do you have any embrace with him hey buddy how are you no um yes i think we spoke just just you didn't, you didn't hug him no 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 embrace were you that kind of friends no i don't we weren't that kind of friends i mean i don't believe you know i think it's a thing there where i'm saying he wasn't my friend i think everybody's a, a friend uh so to speak um but we weren't friends okay. so aside from these three times when was the next time that you saw him um the next time i would have saw him would be uh outside of the office on october 22nd or excuse um, me yeah october 22nd 2013 i believe that's the date yes so before October 22nd, you had three contacts with the defendant, and in those contacts, never developed a relationship to the point that you would call him a true friend? Correct. And I want to be clear, you never played basketball with this man, did you? No. Okay. When in, when in your time with American Canine did you start to have either feelings for Jacinia Suarez or start into a flirting relationship with Jacinia Suarez? When did your relationship change from coworker to something more? Yeah, well, I um, had to travel to Uganda and um, we were in the process of standing up a contract in Afghanistan so we had to put it a team together and handlers it was that nationality that we were going to mobilize and so I worked with her um, while I was in Uganda essentially when was that give us kind of a date range or a month and year if you could yeah I believe it was around April uh, 2013 yeah and during that period while you were in Uganda your relationship began to change with her that's correct. Okay. In what way did it change? It changed. Um, well, we flirted we on the phone. I think both of us, after talking on the phone, we were we we got to the point where I think we both knew that we would, you know, I guess hook up and and stuff like that. Um, then. Ooh. Did anything happen when you returned from Uganda? Did you hook up? Yes, we did. 
when when uh, we had a trip to Alabama the one in October yes so you get back from Uganda when I got back in the end of month April or early May okay and did anything happen between you and Jacinia Suarez between April and October no did the flirting continue on the job site or did it kind of dwindle off it, it I don't think it um, was anything where I can recall being I mean, I think we, we floated a couple of times, but it wasn't nothing strong. Okay. You started to tell us that you had a, a trip to Alabama. Um, was that an employment trip? Yes. Sir. Okay. What was the nature of <clears throat> of that business trip? We were. Um, our company decided to move our training to a different location, and we were sending teams. Uh, dogs and, and handlers there so before they got there we were a group of us were responsible for getting there and receiving them to do the typical stuff that we would do orientation onboarding and we were we you know we were kind of cost savvy at, at the time and so we said we'll drop the van off so that they can have because they didn't have vehicle support we had it in Florida so we drove down and, and drop the van as well. Okay. So as an employee in the HR department and as the deployment manager, you and Justinia Suarez drove up to Alabama and, and took one of the vans. Is that what you're telling us? That's correct, with, with uh, two others. Two other individuals? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long were you in Alabama? Um, we got there at like early a.m. Um, and stayed two nights, so, but I think it's like three days. Three period. and a half, three days? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you recall that trip being uh, initiating Sunday, October 13th, 2013, and ending October 16th, uh, that Wednesday of 2013? Correct. You told us already that you drove up. Did you also drive back? No, we flew uh, back. Okay. One of the purposes was to deliver the van? Correct. While you were up in Alabama, what were the general activities and, and work day like? What was the structure to the to the work? Well, it was early early morning reporting, and I mean we stayed late. And we would eat all of us as a, the four would eat lunch, dinner together, mm. and um, so it was about a typical work day at the office, but maybe a little bit longer. And in the evenings after dinner. Um, did you and Jasenia Suarez spend additional time together, away from the other employees? We did. Okay. Uh, during that time, uh, did you have an affair with uh, with Jasenia Suarez? I did. Okay. Do you regret doing that? I do. You were married at the time, right? Correct. Okay. It, what's your wife's name? Ruby. Okay. Not Shelly. No. Not Shelly. No, not Shelly. Is Mario's wife Shelly? Romario's fiance was her name Shelly? I don't believe that's her name. Okay. But your wife certainly isn't named Shelly. No. Okay. Your wife's name Ruby. Correct. Are you still with your wife? I am. Okay. Did your wife learn of, of this affair? She, yes. Okay. She learned in October of 2013, right? Yes. Okay. And Whatever happened between you and your wife, you're still together today, right? We are. Okay. Do you know, did you know anything about Jacinia Suarez's relationship with her husband? Now, I'm not asking for details, but did you know anything about the relationship between her and her husband at the time of your affair with her? At the time of the affair? Yes, sir. Like, like prior to? Yeah, the affair. building up to it, did you, did you learn anything about their relationship struggles? Um, yes. I. She wasn't happy. Did you spend much time in any of your interaction, whether professional or personal, did you spend much time talking about the defendant or her children? I wouldn't say much time. We had a conversation. 
Just one conversation, right? Uh, I believe just one conversation about that. And I want to be clear that the only time that there was any sort of um, romantic activity between the two of you was limited to this trip during Alab in Alabama to the couple of days you were there. That's correct. When you returned uh, back to Central Florida, did you fly home together? Yes, we all flew together. All four of you flew together? Yes. Okay. And when you got back home, did the flirtation between you and Jacinia Suarez continue? It did. Could you describe to us the, the contact that you had just generally and how that flirtation continued? Well, we would, you know, either text or call. Not too much talking in the office about it. You're trying to be discreet? Yes. During your, your text conversations with Jacinia Suarez, did you develop a code? Um, could you tell us about that code? Yeah, we said, okay, well, if you want to call, use... Uh, um, if you want to call pound and then it was a star for don't don't call was that to make it easier with your spouses yeah to hide it okay. mm -hmm. after you returned on October 16th did a plan develop for you to see Jacinia Suarez again in a romantic capacity yes Okay, and when did that plan first start to form and how? The plan started, when did it first start to form and how? Yeah, I mean, how did that first come into play that you were going to have another romantic interlude of some sort? I can't remember how it first came up, but and other than we started talking this talking about let's get together okay. around Sunday or Monday either October 20th or October 21st did you and Jacinia Suarez start to make plans to meet in a in an actual destination yes and what exactly were the plans? The plans were for her to reserve the, the room. I would pay for it. Where was the room to be located? You know, I can't recall. The, was it somewhere along the I-4 corridor there in Orlando? Yeah, it was. Why exactly did you pick October 22nd to get together? Do you remember? Um, she had a, um, you know, her schedule, her school, and the kids. Her so schedule was, it was around, around that. Was her schedule more complicated than yours? I believe so. Were these plans developed um, in person, by phone, by text, by call? Can you give us an idea? Just probably a little bit of all. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you remember specifically having a, a long text exchange with Jacinia Suarez on the morning of October 22nd, 2013? Yes, well, yeah, I remember. I'm not sure the length of it. Okay. Could you recount for us the, the general conversation that occurred at that time? Um, and we're talking the text message just that whole time, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I was actually out of the office visiting one of our kennels and um, and I canceled uh, the the you know the plan for us to get together at the okay. hotel and the plan was actually for later that day right it was okay why did you cancel the plan well I was hiding and lying about everything and I didn't want to lie to my wife to find out about the money showing up missing from our well not showing up missing but being withdrew, drawn, withdrawn from our um, account the money for the hotel the money that I was going to pay for the hotel okay. and you were concerned that your wife Ruby might find that you had withdrawn these funds and ask you about it and ask me about it. correct okay. did you have uh, that conversation with her generally by text message I did Okay, and um, did she respond to you and, and continue the conversation? She did. Okay. Again, by text message? Yes. Okay. Do you recall generally what time of day it was that you began um, this conversation with, with Jacinia Suarez and had this conversation with her? Yeah, I believe it was just before lunch, like just before noon. Okay. At 11.40 a.m. that morning, did you receive a call from the defendant? I did. Okay. Before we get to it, let me... Uh... Mr. Dredd, I want to skip ahead and then come back a second. It'll be clear what I'm doing here in just a second. Um, during the course of the conversation, or during the course of the investigation, you were contacted by law enforcement and learned that Jacinia Suarez and her children uh, w could not be found. Is that correct? Your Honor, your first Yes, sir. You may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Actually, does someone need to use the restroom? It's about 10.15. Take a break? or Okay, let's go ahead. You need a break? Yeah, yeah let's go ahead and take our 15-minute sure. break. Before. Absolutely. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes. All right. Of October 22nd, 2013, and it's a small point, but I want to make sure that we get the times accurate. What you had told us, I believe, and I want to, I want to make sure, is that you think that the phone call or the text messages you had with her occurred sometime just a little bit before noon or started a little bit before noon. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, it could have started in the morning, though. Okay. And then I, I think I was alluding to or referring to when I, um, as the time frame when I, I canceled. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll show you something here in a second. Do you remember that... Um, Law enforcement officers came to your home on October 23rd, 2013, and informed you that Jacinia Suarez and her children could not be found? Correct. Okay, and that was just the day after these phone messages that you had with her, is that right? Yes. Okay. During the course of that day, did you have repeated and continuous contact with law enforcement on, on October 23rd, 2013? No. You didn't have more than one visit from cops on the 23rd? Oh, on the 23rd? Yes. Um, well, they were at my house. Um, so I guess it was continuous. Okay, uh, continuous. Yeah. And then throughout the course of the investigation, did you have contact with law enforcement for several days? Yes. Okay. I had con yeah. During the course of your contact with law enforcement, did you provide to them your cellular telephone, your cellular device? I did. Okay, and did you allow them to search it forensically and return it to you. I didn't. Okay. I'm going to approach with um, something real quick. I'd like you to take a look at it and see if it refreshes your recollection. Okay. Okay. I've shown it to the defense already, but can you look at this? Um, pay careful attention to the date and time column, and look for the conversation that we're discussing between you and Miss Suarez. Okay. okay. After seeing that document, does it refresh, refresh your recollection? what time the contact actually began that morning between you and Ms. Suarez? In the morning, early in the morning. Okay, and what time specifically? Uh, 8.51 okay, so a.m. So 8.51 a.m. was when it started? Yes. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and by the date and time column, does it continue 
to go throughout the throughout the morning. Yes, it does. Okay. It does. Thank you, sir. So when you received the defendant's call at 1140 that morning that you testified about a moment before the break, when you received his call at 1140, you had already been talking to his wife for about three hours, is that right? Confirmed. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Do you recall the content of the telephone conversation between you and the defendant at 1140 on the morning of October 22nd, 2013? I do. Okay. Could you tell us what it was about, please? He was saying that, um, you know, we were cheating and saying that uh, I denied it. And then he said that, um, well, one of his buddies works for a phone company and, you know, bugged the phone or uh, maybe not that exact word. Mm -hmm. But that was the gist of it. That was the gist of it, correct. And from what he told you, what did you take him to mean? When he said bugged the phone, what did you take him to mean? One moment, please. Yes, sir. You may proceed. Thank you. Yeah, I took it, took it to mean that he was tracking the text messages and he had, I guess, some proof or something of that we were cheating. Was there a point that he actually sent the messages to you? He did. He sent the messages to you that you had had with his wife earlier in the day, is that right? Correct. Okay. And did that convince you that he had seen what you had been talking about? Yes. Okay. How did his demeanor seem during this telephone communication? How did he seem to you? Very uh, upset. Now, you and Jacinia had exchanged many messages over the time, over that short period of time, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you keep those messages on your phone? No. Okay, why not? Well, I know I was cheating and I was hiding uh, any possible way to go back in the phone and look for my, for my wife. Okay, and so you deleted some of those messages out of your phone? I did. Did you delete the messages that the defendant sent you as well? I did. Did the defendant tell you during this telephone conversation on October 22nd, 2013, whether or not you should talk to Yesenia about his confrontation? Yeah, he told me, don't talk to her about it. And why did he say that? Um, I'm not sure why. Um, I can't say so don't talk to Yesenia. I mean, I'm not sure exactly why. <clears throat> Give me just one moment, I'm sorry.
in addition to to telling in addition to the defendant telling you not to tell his wife about the conversation did he also tell you that the two of you could handle this on your own he did okay You were not at the office when this conversation occurred, right? Correct. Okay. Where were you actually? I was at a kennel in New Smyrna Beach. And how long did it take you to, to drive back to the office? Um, about an hour, between an hour, hour and a half around that time. It could have been even 45 minutes. I forget okay. exactly. When you got back to the office, um, what did you do? I... I uh, went to my office, and I think shortly after I was speaking with um, my supervisor, uh, Pete. Pete Owen? Correct. Okay. And did Jacinia interrupt that conversation with Pete Owen? She did. What was her demeanor when she came into the room? Um, I guess the word would be... Uh, you could tell she was uh, worried. That's the word. Yeah. Did you and she then have a conversation about something related to the affair? Yes, we went. When she knocked on the door and, and asked to speak with me, uh, we went to my office, and um, and we spoke there. Okay. Did you learn during that time that just that the defendant had already been to the office once that morning prior to that conversation? Yes. Okay. After speaking with Jacinia, did you have another conversation with the defendant? I did. Okay. And was that a telephone conversation? <clears throat> it was. Okay. Could you tell us about the content of that conversation, please? Well, he said that he wanted to talk and he's coming uh, to the to the office. Did that conversation occur right around 12.51 p.m. on October 22nd, 2013? I believe it did. And shortly after that, did the defendant arrive at American Canine? Yes. Okay. What was his demeanor like when he arrived? I rate it was more of anger and rage. Okay. When did you, where were you when you first saw him? I was outside uh, smoking. I was a few of us outside at that time. Describe it to us. Paint the picture for us. What occurred? I was standing outside. The windows was to my back. So a couple people facing like the parking lot. When he pulled up, I believe Yesenia was down or came down as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they were arguing. He and just anywhere. They were yes. W was it loud? It was loud. Could you ever hear the conversation between the two of them? It was just a lot of, you know, uh, him talking about the affair, mm -hmm. and it started getting even more, I guess, involved or louder. And as people, as it was a few people outside with me, and you know, they went back inside. I went over there. Why did you go over there? Because it seemed like it was getting out of control. What did you hope to achieve by going over there? To maybe calm it down. Calm whom? Calm who down specifically? Calm, calm the defendant down. I mean, she told me about, I guess when he was there the first time, she... He don't went, go into that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk fine. about what she said, okay? There's some rules that prohibit us from talking about what she told you. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Now, as it relates to um, the interchange in the parking lot between you and Jacinia and the defendant, I do want to talk about that. What did you... What did you see? What did you sense when you got over to the conversation 
that was occurring there in the parking lot, the heated exchange between the defendant and his wife. Yeah, well, the uh, defendant told me, he said, well, tell me the truth or I'm going to smack the shit out of you. He said that to you? Yes. Okay. And so what happened after that? Well, I continued to deny uh, the affair. Uh, his stance was that uh, one that would want to, you know, fight. Um, My stance, do you mean his, what his, he was saying verbally or the way he was postured? It was the, his demeanor as well as what he was saying. Okay. Okay. Um, continue. And so when I noticed that, I kind of changed my stance to, I don't know, maybe decrease what is going on. Like, I'm not going to, you know, stand like you and, and go through this. And then I... Did you, I any, did you have any intention of fighting him that morning? No. Okay. And then I went back to the office. Did you go inside? No. I, well, I did go inside, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the office, I understand there's an upstairs and a downstairs. Um, separated by departments. Which part did you work in, the upstairs or the downstairs? Downstairs. So you were on the operations floor with downstairs? Correct. The HR department and administrative stuff was upstairs? Correct. Okay. Did you return to your office in the downstairs area? I didn't. Okay. Um, were you in your office when the defendant and Jacinia Suarez entered the building just a few moments later? Yeah, well, as I was heading to the office... Describe that to us. So we were outside, the three of us. I went to the office and I wanted to use a different door. As I was heading to that door, they were going in the other door, or the defendant knocked on the door to try to gain access. Mm -hmm. And Yesenia, you know, was, wasn't, said, no, go home. Um, and so I went in and noticed that he was in inside the, the building, inside the, the operations office. Despite being told to go home by his wife, he proceeded inside the building? Yes. Once inside the building, can you describe to us what you saw, what you heard? Yeah. I um, was walking back and forth in the hallway, saying that he wants everybody to know that we had an affair and what kind of person she is. and. Now, he wasn't just saying this in a normal tone of voice, was he? No, it was, it was loud, uh, so for everyone to hear. And, and then um, they walked down the hall, or he was walking down the hall yelling it about the affair, and she was following him, asking him to go home, please go home. I heard her scream, didn't see anything, um, but I heard a scream and a noise, uh, and I, I remember her saying to uh, yell and also someone call 911. Did eventually someone call 911? I believe so. Okay. Was it your perception that the call to 911 is what caused the defendant to leave? <laughs> I believe so, and sustain. Okay. And I was going to say, hold on. Oh. How soon after the call? How soon after she yelled "Call 911"? Did the defendant leave the building? Yeah, that's what I, I was actually going to. He left immediately after, and on his way out, you know, he squealed his tires and peeled off. He, he actually squealed his tires in the parking lot? Correct. You heard the noise of the squealing tires? Correct. Just a short while later, did you have an opportunity to speak to the police? I'm not asking you what was said, but did you have an opportunity to speak to the police? I have. Okay. I did. And did you also speak with your supervisor after speaking with the police? I did. Okay. Did you deny at that time that you were having an affair with Yesenia Suarez? I did. Okay. To, to my supervisor? Yeah. yeah. And, and why did you deny that? I didn't want him to think anything okay. bad about me. 
Did you continue to work the full day that day, or did you go home early? I asked them to uh, go home early. Yeah. Okay. And as far as when you got home, um, did you have a conversation with your wife, Ruby? Immediately, yes. Okay. What did you tell your wife? I told her what happened at the office, excluding anything about the affair. I, she asked me, did I do it? And I said, I told her that I, um, I did not. Okay. So you lied to your wife as well? I did. Did your, you said that, your, uh, that you, on several occasions you and your wife had gone to dinner with Jacinia Suarez and her husband, Louis Toledo. Did your wife like Jacinia Suarez before this? It's not like she didn't like her. I think I may have said that before or something. Mm -hmm. But it's that she just thought that it was a trouble thing. I think it was more of an intuition. Okay. Did you receive a, another call from the defendant around 2.10 later that afternoon on October 22nd, 2013? I did. Okay. And did that call come from the defendant? It did. So he initiated the call? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Again, if you tell us, please, what was said during the, the course of this conversation with the defendant? Well, he was saying, don't involve the police. Okay. Um, he wants to keep it between... Yesenia, him, myself, and, and my wife. During the course of this conversation, did he say that he wanted to meet you in person? He did. Okay. And did you think that that was a good idea? No. Why not? I mean, I saw what just happened. I know it was, you know, I mean, I was in lie at that time. It just wouldn't be a smart thing to do. Okay. Late in the evening on October 22nd, 2013, did you receive some strange text messages from the phone of Jacinia Suarez? And when I say strange, different than her normal pattern of speech, different than her normal spelling, different than her normal punctuation? I did. Okay. Did those text messages come in about six minutes to midnight uh, on October 22nd, 2013? If you remember? I believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like so to look at the phone records again? I could. Would it help? Yes, did. Yeah. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So about six minutes to midnight, you received a, a text message from Justinia Suarez's phone. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. During this text message, um, did she ask you to speak with her? She, uh, she asked me to, yes, speak with me. Did she make a mistake, or whomever was holding her device, did they make a mistake about your wife's name during, in that text message? That's correct. Is that the text message where it said, I think we should tell Shelly everything? That's correct. But your wife's not named Shelly, right? No. Okay. After you received a series of about three text messages there, did you begin to place calls um, to Jacinia Suarez? I did. Okay. Did you call her about 11 times or so in the next... Uh, 23 minutes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you ever receive a response during those calls? No. Okay. Did you follow up with a text message about Pete Owen? Yeah, I did. Okay. What's the significance of calling? Uh, what did you say? First, what did you say about Pete Owen? Well, I said, if you don't pick up, I'm going to have to call Pete. What's the significance of calling Pete? Who was Pete to all of you guys? He was my our supervisor. But he was um, a little bit more than that, though, and right? He was, yeah, he was a leader. He was one that people uh, confided in at work. Um, 
And I knew if I mentioned his name, if she was receiving the call, um, then maybe that would likely get her to return the call. And then did, in fact, you get another message from her a short while later? Or a message from that phone? I had to look at it again. Sure, no problem. I know it's a lot to remember. Mm. Now we're fresh as to the course of communication that evening? Yes. Okay. After this message that you sent in which you named Pete, um, did you receive a, a response from her about 20 minutes later? I did. Okay. Um, having gotten that response, were you satisfied that everything was okay in, in her world? No. Okay. Did you, what did you do? to make sure that she was all right. What did I do to make sure mm -hmm. she was all right? Yeah. When I felt concerned? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when, but I, I did call my boss. Yeah. And did you talk with Jacinia Suarez around 12.49 a.m. on October the 22nd, or excuse me, on October 23rd, mm -hmm. in the early morning hours around 12.49? Yes. Do you have a recollection of how long that conversation lasted? Not for sure. Uh, I know the phone records will say what it was. Yeah, the phone records say 14 minutes and 13 seconds. Does that, that sounds, seem about right? That sounds right. Okay. Now, Again, you can't tell us what she said, but I want to talk with you about the general tone and tenor of the conversation. Try and give us a sense of the conversation, would you? She wasn't herself. In uh, what way? Uh, how she was speaking. Give us give so us some idea of how she was speaking, that it was different. It sounded like, like maybe it would be coming from someone that was drugged. Uh, what made you? I'm sorry. What? If I could clarify. Yeah. Strike that. That's not right. Oh. If I could clarify, okay. there, there's no allegations. I'll sustain the objection. Rephrase the question. Yes. Mr. Dredden, was Jacinia Suarez's uh, speech slurred that evening? It was. Okay. Did she seem to have some pressure on the way that she was speaking? Objection, Your Honor. Did she have some pressure? Is speculation limiting me? So the question is vague and speculative. Was the, can I ask a different question? Go ahead and was, ask the question. Was Sorry. the conversation forced? Was it a difficult conversation? It was. Okay. How did she seem to you? Was she happy? Was she upset? Was she sad? She didn't seem... Well, she wasn't happy. She was very soft in her words and very severely slurred in her speech. Um, she seemed to think that she has a plan on, you know, um, on being there because I was concerned um, the safety. She said no. Did she seem to want to stay in her home that evening? Yes. You, were you concerned for her safety staying there? I was. I mean, I was law enforcement, and the first thing they tell you to do is separate for any domestic violence. Okay. And, and I told her to think about the kids. Your Honor. This is 
not responsive to the question. His experience is around. Sustain. Did she ever tell you whether or not the defendant was there with her? She didn't. Okay. Did she say that the defendant was in fact there? Well, she told me that he was sending the text earlier. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Move to strike the answer, please. The jury will disregard the last answer. Did you get a sense of, the, of whether or not the defendant was there with her at the time of the call? Yes. Okay. Was he there with her during the time of the call? I don't believe so. Did you get a sense of speculative? Judge, I can't ask for the direct quote because it's hearsay, but he can talk about the generality of the conversation and whether or not he learned during that conversation that the person was there. That's not hearsay. Sustain. <clears throat> When the call ended at 1.03 a.m., was that the last contact that you ever had with Yesenia Suarez? It was um, that I know of, yes. Right. It was the last time you heard her voice for sure, right? Correct. Okay. How did she seem when the call ended? Was her, was her demeanor the same throughout? It was consistent, yes. The following morning at 7.02, um, did you receive a text message from her device? I did. Okay. Do you have any idea whether or not she sent it? No idea if she sent it. No. Okay. Within a couple hours of receiving that text message, did the police come to your house? Yes. Okay. Did they seem to want to talk about Jacinia and whether, whether you had seen her? Yes. Did they seem to know anything about the affair that had occurred at that point? No, they just asked, well, I don't know if they, if they seemed to know about the affair or not. Okay. Did you talk with them about the affair? I did. Okay. Had you even admitted it to your wife at that point? No. Okay. I only have one more question. As far as you can tell us for certain, your last contact with Jacinia Suarez ever was 1.03 a.m. when that call terminated. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Cross-examination. Yes, sir. Please, the court. Courts, please. Good morning, Mr. Drudden. Good morning. Do you remember me, sir? I do. Okay. Do you remember coming to my office for a deposition a couple of years did. ago? Correct. <clears throat> Let's clear one thing up if we can right away. So, your wife, Ruby has met Lewis in person, isn't that right? Correct. You, uh, as a couple, went out with Lewis and his wife as a couple with another couple to dinner, isn't that correct? Correct. So he knows your wife's name is Ruby, doesn't he? Correct. He called her by name before, isn't that correct? I mean, they were together, well, yeah? That would think so. Okay. So in the course of this event that occurred, he made at least one call to you, and the, the one that I'm referring to is the one in which you referred to as him saying to you, leave the police out of it. Do you know that call? I know about that call. Okay. So in that call, do you recall what Mr. Toledo wanted? when he called you about that and leaving the police out of it. Do you remember what he wanted when he said that? What he wanted? I don't remember what he wanted. I remember what he told me. 
Okay, did he tell you, he told you at that call that he wanted you and Ruby, and he used her name, and his wife and you to all meet at the same time so everybody knew what was going on. That's what he told you, right? He told me that, yes. So he said, I want to meet you and Ruby, and I want to meet with Eusenia and me, and I want everybody to know everything. That's what he said, right? That's what he... Yes? That's what he said, yeah. Okay. And that call was on the 22nd of October, isn't that right? Correct. So the text you got that may have used the wrong name, did you even think anything of it? No, I did. I'm sorry? I did. You thought well, something of it because it had the wrong name? Well, it had the wrong name, yes. But you know Mr. Toledo knows your wife's name, is that correct? That's, uh, yeah, I think he knows, yeah, he knows okay. the name. And that happened on the same day, isn't that right? That you got the text? The, t the text and the call, yes. It's not the same day, a couple hours apart, a few hours apart? I'm not sure if a few hours apart okay. or not. All right. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass you, and I know this is difficult for you. I do. But there are a couple of things I need to ask you about. And um, uh, so I appreciate you listening to my question. And I'm just going to ask you some questions about what you've testified about today, okay? Okay. If you don't understand me or you have a problem with my question, just tell me, all right? Okay. All right, so you told Mr. Will earlier that this relationship you had with Ms. Suarez started in April. Is that what you said? In April uh, 2013. When I was in Uganda. Do you remember me asking you that question at your deposition? Not. I mean, okay. Yeah. Do you remember telling me that it started in January of 2013? Um, if I told you it started in January, that was I very specific? And I said around, or I mean, I don't recall that. Well, what you said was that it started in January of 2013. So, do you remember me asking you a question? Would that have been when, when you were on your trip to Uganda? Do you remember me asking you that? Sure. Hey, line, I'm sorry. Yeah, can I, I get to it first? Do you remember me asking you that? Can I can I see? Sure, it? Yeah. that's what I was trying to get. Okay. To. So, yeah, I want to I want to show it to you. So this would be page eighteen, line one. Mm -hmm. May I approach? You may. Okay. <clears throat> So do you remember me asking you that now? I remember you. Say, can you repeat the question again? Sure. The question that I asked you was, and that would have been when you were on your trip to Uganda. And you said, that's when I first, and I said, and when was that? And you said in January, two th last January, 2013. So that's way before the fall, because you had previously said something else. Mm -hmm. So you said correct. And I said, okay, so you went to Uganda in 2013. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I went to Uganda in 2013. Mm -hmm. That was the question. I, I'm trying to get the, what you're... What, well, here's I, what I'm getting I, at. It's, kinda, yeah. it's not very hard to understand. You mm -hmm. said to the state attorney that this relationship you had with Ms. Suarez started in April of 2013. That's confirmed. You told me that it started in January of 2013. Do you remember saying that to me? We maybe we heard it at the office in January 2013. We didn't talk on the talk about linking up and getting together, uh, hooking up until Uganda, um, April 2013. <laughs> 
So if you told me that in January of 2013 you texted at night with Ms. Suarez from Uganda, that would be incorrect? If I told you... Listen to my question. If you told me mm -hmm. that... If you told me that in January 2013 you were in Uganda and during the day you texted about business, but at night you texted about personal matters and hooking up, that would be incorrect? I'm going to tell you that if I told you I was in Uganda in January, then I was incorrect remembering the month I was there. Um, so and, you, hold on. Yeah. So you, you're incorrect about the month. Yeah. So yeah. I took your deposition on July 31st, 2014. Today is 2017. You remember it better today? I'm going to tell you that I wasn't in Uganda within four months apart. All right. So now I'm going to page 19. asked you uh, a question about texting in Uganda. I said that nothing happened. Hold on, I don't want to confuse you. I will start at the right place. So I asked you about texting from Uganda. Do you remember me asking you about that? You could, you could have. Yeah. I'll just ask. If okay. you don't remember, I'm going to show it to you. Okay. okay. So do you remember me asking you about that? You can show it to me because I okay. mean, if you're saying we talked about it, it okay. could be. This would be page 19, starting at line 19. May I approach? You may do so. So, from Uganda, you would text about business in the daytime and then personal matters at night. Isn't that correct? I don't think that was the case. Um, you and don't I, don't think know that, you, I didn't read that just now. You don't think that was the case? Well, Uganda is on a different time zone. Um, I'm not texting at 4 in the morning when it's here uh, in the U.S. Um, so I had a text about work over email, a phone call, and then, um, and then um, I think, I mean, it could have been at night in Uganda. In the okay, well, my here. question was, during the daytime, you questioned, you texted about business, but at night, it was personal matters between you and Ms. Suarez. That was my question. Are you saying you didn't do that or you did do that? That's I'm saying I can't give you the time of what was what and exact, the, the exact thing there. Okay, well, been... So my question to you then was on page 19, line 24, were you asking for documents that happened at night or the conversation? You said, well, I'm saying, and I finished the question, the personal conversation. You said, you said the personal conversation happened at night. You said that. Mm -hmm. Did it happen at night or not, sir? Yeah, but work could have happened at Did night. Did you say that? I don't think there's a difference between the two, but uh, if I said that, then I believe that was the case. All right, and the personal conversation had to do with you two having an affair, didn't it? I'm sorry? The personal conversation that you had at night, mm -hmm. that had to do with you two having an affair, didn't it? Having an affair? Yes. Or talking about That had to do with you all talking about having an affair or having an talking affair? Talking about having an affair is different, though, than talking about ha an affair. Um, okay. So we were talking about 
um, having an affair. Yes. Okay. So when it when you when I asked you about that, I said on page twenty, line twelve, tell me what, tell me kind of what it was like when you were texting, and you said it was basically both of us agreeing to or agreeing or opening up, saying that we're on the same level. It's mutual. That it that was what it was. And I said, what was mutual? And that you were attracted to each other. And you said to be with each other. You said that, didn't you? Yeah, right. To be, to... To I be guess, with each up. other? Yeah, hook up. Having sex? Yes. <clears throat> and that was in January of 2013, right? I told you, now that you poured both of them, I can go and uh, take a picture of my passport. Well, let's do it like this. Was down there. Let's do it like this. When you were in that room with me mm -hmm. in July of 2014, you said it was January of 2013. Mm -hmm. Did you not? I'm going to tell you that. So did you I, understand my question? Then. Did you understand my question? When you were in the room in your mm -hmm. deposition with me, mm -hmm. You told me it was in January of 2013, did you not? Yeah, it could have been. I, I told you, yes, it was January 2013. That's what you said to me and, then, isn't it, sir? Yeah. And I could have had the month sir, did, messed up. Then. One, so my question, okay? One moment, please. One moment. Sir, answer the question with a yes or no when, okay. when he asks you, okay? Okay. If you need to explain further, then ask if you will be permitted to explain it further. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ask the question again. Yes, sir. So you said to me that it was January of 2013. Do you remember? Yes. Okay. Just to make sure it was clear in that room that day, do you remember me asking you the following question? I'm not trying to remember exact dates, but what I am trying to understand is the nature of your relationship with Ms. Suarez. So from January to again, I said to you then, if I misstate this, please correct me. Do you remember me saying that to you? Judge, can we have a reference? I yes, said, yeah, page, yeah, page 22, my, my, line start three. again. Yes, sir. Begin with the reference first, please. I thought I did. I'm sorry. Page 22, line 3. The question I asked you was, I'm not trying to remember the exact date, but what I am trying to understand is the nature of your relationship with Ms. Suarez. So from January to again, if I misstate this, please correct me. In January, you took a trip to Uganda in which the nature of your relationship changed from professional to personal. Is that correct? I asked you that. Do you remember your answer? Do you remember your answer? Not exactly, no. May I approach? You may. This would be page 22, line 10. So the question I just asked you, can you read it out loud? Well, you can read it out loud or I can say what it says. Just read it out loud. That line right there. Line 10. The question seems pretty lengthy. So may I reread the question and the answer now, Your Honor? His memory is refreshed. Is your memory refreshed, sir? Yes. I'm not trying to remember exact dates, I said. But what I am trying to understand is the nature of your relationship with Ms. Suarez. So from January to again, if I misstate this, please correct me. In January, you took a trip to Uganda in which the nature of your relationship changed from professional to personal. Is that correct? That was the question. Your answer was yes. That's when it basically opened up. Do you remember saying that, sir? Yes. Now, you got back from Uganda 
Is that correct? Yes. But nothing happened. No. So nothing happened between you and Mrs. Suarez until you went to Alabama. Isn't that correct? Correct. Nothing actually physically happened until you went to Alabama. Is that correct? That's correct. But prior to that, you all had been flirting with each other by text or however it was you did that. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. That's correct. Okay. Well, when was that code put in? The code mm -hmm. was when we got back from Alabama. Oh, so that was after. Okay. Yeah. But prior to that, mm -hmm. you all were communicating about hooking up, weren't you? No. But prior to Alabama? Yeah. Prior to the visit in Alabama, we were not communicating about hooking up. So are you saying that basically two weeks before you went to Alabama, you didn't know you were going to have sex with oh. Well, okay, yes. So Alabama, yes. right? Yeah. So correct. you did know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to did. speak at the same time. Sorry. So you did know? I did know. Okay. So from January to sometime in September, there was no physical activity, but you were sometime in September beginning to flirt again. Is that right? Yes. And then made arrangements to have an affair when you went to Alabama a couple of weeks ahead of time, right? Yes. Okay. So you knew what was going to happen when you went to Alabama. Yes. That's what I'm getting at. Yes. All right. Now, on the day that everything happened, as far as as far as um, Mr. Toledo finding out about the affair, mm -hmm. you found out that he knew from Ms. Suarez. Is that right? I I um, got a call from him. So, that, is that the first time you knew that he knew? Yes. So it was, you found out from Louis Toledo himself? Correct. Who called you himself? Correct. And the first time he called you, he asked to meet with you, didn't he? can't remember if it was to meet with me. I, um, but it was, hey, I know about this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he wanted to talk about it, right? He wanted to talk with you about it, didn't he? Are you asking that question? Yes. Well, he was he was talking on the phone with me. I don't. He was talking on the phone with me. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dryden, when he when he called you, he told you that he knew what was going on, didn't he? Correct. He told you that uh, he, you don't remember if he told you if he wanted to meet with you, but he said that he had text messages, didn't he? Correct. Correct. You deny the whole thing. I denied it. You lied to him. Correct. And then you asked for the text messages. Is that correct? Can't recall if I asked for them. Okay, well, when the state attorney asked you, you said you, you asked for the text messages and he sent you the text messages. Do you remember saying that just a few minutes ago to the state attorney? I actually don't uh, remember saying that. Okay. I asked for the text messages, but I know that he sent them. For, he sent them. You don't know if you asked for them. And you're saying just now, he said, I asked, we, we, we had a, we, he asked that question and I said, I asked that. I don't recall that. Just now. You don't recall that? Yeah. Okay. But I asked for the text message. I don't recall it. Uh, out of fairness, I don't recall hearing that question. Okay.
May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, sir. This would be the transcript of the audio recording interview, page 20, line 17. May I approach? You may. Okay. So did you refresh your memory? I did. Okay. So when the police asked you about it, you said, starting at line 17, but he was persistent to talk. It's the same call, right? Okay. He was persistent to talk, you know, so I started talking to him. And I was like, well, look, man, send me the text messages. You said that, right? Yes. And we'll talk in 30 minutes. Do you remember saying that to him now? Yes. And I'm sorry, I don't know if I can talk right now. But no, sir. No? Okay. Did, he sent you those texts, didn't he? He did. You still denied it even after that? I denied what? The affair. I didn't. I, I did. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, at some point, you get back to your place of business and you speak with Ms. Suarez about what's going on. Is that correct? Yes. So she's naturally upset and tense about what's going on, right? I mean, everybody's been found out. Yes. I mean, your boss knows, but your wife doesn't know, right? My boss did not know. Well, he was screaming out whatever he was screaming out. My boss? Not your boss. Mr. Toledo came to the workplace right after that, right? Yes. He was telling everybody, right? Yeah, he was screaming, yelling. Don't know. So your boss heard it? My boss heard it. I believe so. Okay. Later on, you went home and you told your wife what happened, but you didn't tell her about the affair, right? Correct. So, after you get out of your car from where you'd been, you, um, I'm back in the morning. I know I jumped around a little bit. So, I'm back in the morning. Now you're back to your place of business. You've talked to Lewis on the phone. He sent you the text messages. You see Ms. Suarez. Is that correct? At the office. Yeah. So, yeah. She tells you that, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I understood you to say in here that she was upset. Is that correct? That she was upset? Yeah, because everything had been found out. Naturally, right? Stressed? Yeah. Disappointed? I don't know if I used the word upset or not. Uh -huh. Okay. But yes. Whatever word you used. Okay. Concerned, whatever it was, mm -hmm. everybody wasn't feeling right. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I, I would agree. Okay. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Toledo shows up at the, at the workplace. Is that correct? Shortly thereafter. Speaking with him. Yeah, we spoke. Yes. Okay. You spoke outside, and Ms. Suarez was there as well. Is that right? I'm sorry. Do I, I, you, you spoke to Mr. Toledo at your place, but that was in the parking lot. You went outside to smoke a cigarette. Is that right? I was outside already, yes, mm -hmm. at that time. And that's when he drove up, right? Correct. Okay. When he came up, you indicated that he was upset with you. Was he? What do you mean he came when he came into the office? When yeah, he got, he got out of the car and saw you, and you walked yeah. over to him. Was he upset with you? Well, yeah, yeah. So you're not surprised that he was upset with you, are you? Was I surprised that he was upset with me? Yeah, I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah. And you're not surprised that Mrs. Suarez would be upset that these two particular men in front of her are arguing in the parking lot of her business, are you? What do you mean, arguing? 
Uh, you said these two men arguing? That'd be you and Mr. Toledo. I don't recall arguing. Okay, Wh whatever it is you recall, mm -hmm. sir, mm -hmm. whatever conversation, however you want to characterize it. It was an argument, though. Okay. okay. You, you said argument. Allow him to finish the question. Go ahead. However you want to say it, mm -hmm. Mr. Toledo is there and you were there talking about an affair you were having with his wife in the parking lot of that business. Isn't that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. He and you separated, is that correct? You went your separate ways, isn't that right? I departed. Yeah, I left back to the office. Okay. Well, I mean, you just, and I'm just sorry for the, the, the questions, but just the clarity of it is just what I'm, is why I'm uh, asking or asking a question to you. Okay. Clarification. So if you walked one way and he walked a different way, is that separating? Yes. Okay, so you separated. You walked one way and he walked a different way. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Later on, a few minutes later, however long it was, you heard him inside the office. Is that correct? Yes. He was upset. Is that correct? Yes. Do you know what he was upset about? Uh, the affair. Yeah. Okay. He left. Is that correct? Yeah, he left. Okay. When he left, the police came. Is that correct? Correct. Do you recall speaking to an officer? I recall speaking to the officer uh, at work. How long did you speak to him? Not long. I can't. Minute? Don't know how. I'm sure the officer would put the time in there. Um, but maybe it was a, a few minutes. You have to confirm with the police report. Okay, but you spoke to him? Yes. Did you tell him that Mr. Toledo was there because you were having an affair with his wife? No. Did you tell him you didn't know why he was there? No. So you didn't lie to the policeman? I did not lie to that guy. They only showed up. Policeman. Just after that sometime, I'm assuming, is when you asked to go home early? Correct, yeah. You went home early and saw your wife, is that right? Correct. Did the police come to your house that night? The 22nd? No. Somewhere in that evening is when you began exchanging texts again with Ms. Suarez? Or even if you didn't exchange them, you received them, or whatever was going on? Well, is that right? What do you mean, whatever was going on? So sometime in that evening, can you clarify that? Yeah. Did you hear from Ms. Suarez that night? Um, or her phone? Yes. Okay. Your wife was there then, right? Yes. Your wife knew you were receiving those texts, right? Yes. You were trying to ignore those texts, right? Yes. You did tell your wife generally what happened at your office, is that right? Everything except the affair. Well, did you tell her that you were accused of that? Yes. So she knew something was going on, right? Yes. And then you started getting the text messages. And she saw them, right? Yes. She was asking you about that, right? Correct. She was asking you, why is Ms. Suarez texting you if nothing happened? Well, I can't remember exactly what she said then, but well, um, she was, yes, concerned what, what was going on here. Mm -hmm. So finally, You'd gotten so many texts that you decided to call her. Correct. Nobody answered right away until you sent another. You sent a text. Correct. Now, when you spoke to Ms. Suarez on the phone, when she when she called, she called you, right? 
Yes. In response to that text. Yeah. You say that her speech was slurred. Is that what you said? Yes. Do you know what she'd been doing prior to her calling you? No. Um, do you know if she had a drink? Uh, no. Do you know if the day was so upsetting for her that she took a sleeping pill? No. Do you know if her kids were sick? Don't know. Do you know if she was sick? I don't know. I told you what I, what I know. Okay. You said she was stressed? Yes. And the conversation with you was stressed? Say it again. The conversation with you on the phone was stressed? The conversation with me on the phone, how I felt that she was stressed, sure. correct. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it would be stressed if, for her, because the affair was exposed? I believe so. So when you, you're not saying that this conversation was forced or stressed because Mr. Toledo was doing something to her, are you? Objection calls for speculation as to what witness may know about. Sustained. Because he, he doesn't know. So, okay. Objections. I, uh, counsel, I have a rule. Uh, uh, Next no. question, please. I'm sorry. I was just trying to clarify it. Counsel, I have a rule. I got you. <laughs> I forget how long that conversation lasted, sir. Do you know how long it lasted? Yeah, you got the records. It's a few uh, minutes. Can, was it a few minutes? Yeah, you can refer to that, please. Okay. The next day, the police came to your house, is that right? Yes. The police came to your house um, more than once, isn't that right? More yes. than one agency came? Yes. So who came first? I don't know what agency uh, came. They came in your house, right? That's right. Your wife still doesn't know that you had an affair, does she? No. And the police are in your house? Well, I'm, I can't say she doesn't know at that time. If you I haven't admitted affair, it to I haven't admitted it, yes. Okay. And the police are in the house. They're in your house. And then later on that day, they were in your house again or in your yard interviewing you because Ms. Suarez was missing. Isn't that right? Yeah, out back, yes. Mm -hmm. You stayed out back because you didn't want your wife to hear it. Isn't that right? Um, I can't remember... When, no, I went out there and, and asked them, can, can I smoke while we're talking? That was the reason I was out there. Um, I don't believe my wife was, I don't know if she was upstairs or downstairs at the time. But if you're alluding to if I was trying to hide and go out there to not tell her, uh, I, I, if she was right there, I probably at that time would have went a way to talk, but um, I don't think that I had a. I was out out back, and I'm not for sure where she was at, and I was smoking a cigarette. Yeah. May I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes, sir. May I approach? You may. <coughs> The records deposition page 75, um, line 7. Sorry for the delay. Thank you.
So, sir, do you recall me asking you, was your wife there when they were talking to you? And you said, my wife, no. My wife, no, N-O. Because at the time, she did not know. And then I asked you, but she wasn't there? And you said, where? And I said, well, this was at your house, right? And you said, at my house, at my house, she was upstairs or inside. Do you remember that? Yes, and that's what I just said. Okay. Later on, you had you were asked to go to the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Is that correct? Yes. And you did that. Isn't that correct? That's right. And you took your wife with you. Isn't that correct? Yes. So when you say that you told your wife about everything, that's really when you did it, isn't it? No, it's not. You did it, you didn't tell her on the way to the Volusia County Sheriff's Office? No. Did you tell her after? Well, yeah, after, but... Because you, you were... that same day? Say uh, again? What do you mean, after? Let's just clarify it. You were asked to go to the Volusia County Sheriff's Office, is that correct? That's right. You went there with your wife, is that correct? That's correct. At that time, she still did not know that you were having an affair with Ms. Suarez. I still, I still did not tell her. I still hadn't told her. You went there to be interviewed because she was missing. Isn't that correct? I went there to interview, to explain of the night. I don't think I even knew about it being missing or her being missing or anything like that. I just can't. You don't think you knew that she was missing by then? I don't know what happened at that point. But they... They talked to you when you got there, didn't they? No. Yeah. But they, not about they her. Talk. They were only concerned about... I'm sorry. Go ahead. They were only concerned they about They talked what? about her. Uh, I mean, they talked about asking me the questions, not about, what, you know, where, what was going on. I still didn't. I was still in the dark and, uh, and didn't know. You were still in the dark and didn't know? Well, I could, I, I mean, I could put things together and figure out um, that something bad has happened. Um, and I actually believe that's what I was told. It's just something, I mean, it's not a good thing that, that we're here and what happened. They searched your house, didn't they? Yeah, they looked through my house. If you can find a logical breaking point in the next five minutes. This would be a really good place. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a break at this time for lunch. I'll come back at 1.30. Okay, come back at 1.30 for lunch. Don't talk about the case. Don't do any research, okay? Can I see you with the judge for a second? Sure. All right, the jury is out. Uh, we'll be in lunch. Can we approach this for a quick second? Yeah. It doesn't need to be on the record.